It is edge of your seat, hold your breath style racing, and it uh, decides its championship on one of the most picturesque yet challenging courses anywhere in North America. Hello, everyone. Welcome again to Championship Weekend for the Battery Tender Global MX-5 Cup. I'm Mark James, happy to be joined in the broadcast booth by Tony Laporta and Brian Ortiz, um, trying to hold off Celine Roland, Robert Stout, and other pursuers in a quest to win the championship. 11 points was Brian Ortiz's championship gap coming into the weekend here in California, Mark. But after qualifying late last evening, uh, Celine Roland was able to lay down not only a fast enough lap to take the pole for race one, which is coming up right now, but race two a few hours later today. And each pole position here in the Global MX-5 Cup is worth one championship point. So for those of you back home who are a little bit better and quicker at math than me, it took me all night to figure it out. But the championship lead shrinks from 11 to nine points is what Brian Ortiz has. But the drama coming into the weekend, Mark, yesterday only one practice session for these MX-5 Cup drivers. Brian Ortiz missed every minute of it due to engine troubles they had to swap the motor in that number four machine he got out for the very first time with a new engine in qualifying he qualifies seventh for race one today well and i think good news for him as we've seen throughout the course of the season i mean as long as you can stay with that uh, lead draft that seems to develop um, pretty much to the halfway point of the race uh, seventh is a position that you're more than capable of winning from in the series absolutely i mean you and i have talked about it all season long really it's not where you start in these races of course but it's where you finish and it's very easy to pass in these cars we see it dozens and dozens of times every lap in the MX-5 Cup Series. So yeah, seventh is certainly a place where Brian Ortiz can race from. We held a championship contenders press conference this morning with all six of the drivers that are eligible mathematically to walk out of here with the $200,000 scholarship prize. And Ortiz looked a lot calmer than I expected. Of course, uh, things aren't always what they seem above the water. Uh, Mo Murray joins us from Boston Motorsports and Mo, a challenging championship weekend for these teams and drivers because as is typical, a doubleheader weekend. What is not typical is that both races will, in fact, be run today. Uh, yes, two races in one day. That's a, that's a big challenge for the teams. And unfortunately, because of the crowded nature of this championship weekend, we have a lot of different classes running here. It's also the, the season finale of, of all of the uh, open wheel classes in the, on the IndyCar circuit. Um, we ended up with a, a longer but but only one practice session. We did extend that practice session, but they only got one practice session, plus they're qualifying yesterday and then two races today. For Brian Ortiz, our championship leader, that formula did not work for him. He had an engine problem in that one quali in that one practice session and did not complete a lap, so he got a new engine in time for qualifying, but really spent that qualifying session trying to get that new engine dialed in. So the, the lack of track time coming into this race weekend, this is a track we have not raced at for a couple year so a lot of these drivers haven't been here before including our challenger Celine Roland uh, so so the ability to f you know find the quick way around this technically difficult racetrack uh, with the short amount of uh, track time was available is is what's really going to separate the men from the boys as we get into these two races uh, Nick Yeoman joins us from pit road this afternoon and Nick uh, the weather in uh, a phrase picture perfect today could, could not describe it any better myself mark uh, attempts that we are used to seeing here in northern california in the 70s the thing we're going to watch though with the conditions are more on track we've seen throughout the course of this weekend no matter what series it is a lot of dirt and dust has been kicked up out of the racetrack throughout the course of this race that track is going to change and then of course the big question mark who comes in with momentum looking for this nd2 championship the last four races have been won by four different drivers and they happen to be the drivers that sit first through fourth in the championship. It's going to be a fun day here at Laguna Seca as we're set to go racing. Uh, Celine Roland and Luke Oxner will roll off on the front row with Robert Stout and Drake Kemper just behind Michael Carter, Robert Noaker, then Brian Ortiz and Zach Lee, Brian Lockwood and John Dean in the top ten. Let's talk a little bit about John Dean. He is uh, uh, looking to, uh, to to wrap up his own championship quest this weekend in, uh, in his class. Yeah, provisionally he stands as the ND1 champion already before we even throw the green flag on our final two races this weekend, Mark. And so really all he's got to do is keep it clean, keep it on track, and he will leave Laguna Seca with the $100,000 scholarship prize that comes along with that ND1 championship. Of course, it's been really no surprise. Uh, he's just dominated here in 2019 in that older generation MX-5 Cup car. And then as Mo and I talked about during qualifying and practice yesterday, that's one of the things that's really helped Celine roll on benefit so much. In only his second year in this sport, second year of wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing is 
the expertise and knowledge of a guy like John Dean, who knows these MX-5 Cup cars so well. So John Dean and his team of six sideways drivers uh, obviously roll into this weekend, a track most of them have been to before, with the exception of Celine Roland. Uh, but yeah, John's really just got to do what he normally does, get out of here clean, and he's that $100,000 richer ND1 champion at the end of the weekend. No, and then ND1 class rolling off 15th, Sarah Montgomery uh, provided uh, some pretty good storylines uh, during the race weekend in Portland a few weeks ago. Sarah, it's her uh, third year in the series. She races for John's, John Dean's team, Six Sideways. Uh, and in Portland last weekend, uh, at our first race in Portland, Sarah made history by becoming the first female driver to stand on an MX-5 Cup podium. And she backed that up the following day. Um, by uh, standing on the podium again, and she's going to tr try and prove that it wasn't a Portland fluke and try and get on that podium uh, for a third time today here at uh, WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca. Sounds like the 51 of Jaime Gabaldoni going to take the green flag from the pit lane after blowing the checkered flag in qualifying yesterday. Mo, I know we're going to talk about him a little bit later on, but Mark, uh, pace cars beeling off, and we're getting ready to go racing uh, for the final two rounds. Indeed we are, and uh, you see the, the, the front runner Celine Roland and Luke Oxner as uh, they have uh, navigated the uh, corkscrew, I think, about as slowly as they'll navigate it throughout the course of, uh, of the next 45 minutes or so. They come off of that final turn, and they are waiting on the green flag. Oxner in the 77. Looking to the right of your screen as the green flag flies, and Celine Roland gets a really good jump and is going to tow Robert Stout down the straightaway with him. They'll crest the hill. Stout grabs the third spot, uh, or Michael Carter grabs the third spot with uh, Stout P2 as they set up for the hairpin, which is turn number two. Yeah, Luke Oxner working really hard after not getting the green flag that he wanted to right there. They all make it cleanly through the Andretti hairpin in turn two. A little bit of dust getting kicked up on the exit as they set up for three, but Oxner, I think, the big loser on that start, unfortunately, after a great qualifying result, put him P2 on the outside of that front row. But the important part is we are all clean and green. Celine roll on out in front and uh, we are off and racing here as they make their way towards the hill and mark i'll point out the turn six where these drivers are heading to uh, right after turn five those that's the area that a lot of these guys have said is the big trouble corner not the corkscrew rather but turn six because if you mess up that corner that takes you all the way up the hill you are going to lose your entire lap with how important momentum is in these mx5 cup cars getting ready to set up for the corkscrew here momentarily for the first time and oxner is back full song now we mentioned carter had grabbed that third spot off the start as we car see a car spinning uh, toward the rear of the field but uh, good news to report for you Luke Oxner fans uh, he has uh, gathered it back in and he has grabbed that third position yeah Luke looks really good right here Celine roll on rolling in second after taking the green flag for the pole position but they're all chasing two round winner Robert Stout right here in the number 28 as they make their way out of 10 they'll set up for that final left hander corner number 11 Stout looks good remember he comes into the weekend mathematically still eligible for the championship, it's a long shot, no doubt, but he is still in the running. He's going to bring him out of 11 to lead the opening lap. Stout's your leader, but look at that. They already fan out two and three wide. Oh, trouble for Roland. That's the 87 of Roland, the point leader. Oh, my goodness. That is not what they needed on this championship run. There's a problem clearly with that race car as the whole field is freight training him. As I, I don't I don't see how he gets back around. Clearly, there's a mechanical issue with that car. Yeah, it's going to come to a complete stop. I don't imagine he's going to flip it around and go counter course direction into pit lane. That would result in a massive penalty. Mark, you're right. That car has lost all power as he's now down on the motorcycle access lane heading through the inside of turn two. Uh, I don't know if Roland's going to be able to get back. Uh, tough break for Celine Roland as uh, Tony mentioned off the top. So dominant qualifying yesterday to pick up those valuable championship points. And uh, right there he was in contention uh, all over Brian Ortiz. But uh, fate has intervened. If, if I look back four spots back, five spots back. Uh, I'm looking at the 99 of Greg Kemper. That's the silver shiny car you're taking a peek at right now with that yellow roll cage there. And you talk about a guy who's had two vastly different halves of the season, Absolutely. Tony. Championship contender through the first half of the season. A regular in terms of podium finishes and race wins. And the second half of the season has not been kind to of him. At all. No, you're exactly right, Mark. He kicked off the season with the victory in the very first round back at Cirque for the Americas in Austin. But he has not finished in the top 10 in the last four rounds of competition. Two races at Mid-Ohio and two races in the Pacific Northwest at the Grand Prix of Portland. Kemper comes in sixth in the standings. Again, still mathematically in it, but Kemper will be the first to tell you that he is not in the contention for this championship. But guys, the big thing is, Mo, 
you've got Brian Ortiz already up to fifth, and his championship rival is done and out of this race before it begins. So uh, we saw in Portland that uh, Celine got taken out of race one in the first corner and managed to fight his way back to sixth place. I don't know that he's going to get back into this race, but if we assume he doesn't and scores no points from this race, Brian Ortiz started this race with a nine-point lead, and there are 32 points available from the second race later today. Uh, uh, so Brian would need to score uh, 20, what's the difference, 23 points in this race, which puts him in about fifth place to secure the championship. Um, th this is a disaster for Celine Roland. He looked very, very strong coming into this event. He had pole for both races by a wide margin at a racetrack he'd never seen before, and, and unfortunately had a car problem at the end of that first lap. That is an absolute disaster for Celine. Well, with the promise he came into the series with a year ago, Tony, I think with the year that he had in 2018, I mean, he was the prohibitive favorite, I think, by many to win the championship this season. Oh, no doubt, Mark, because right now you've got your 2017 Rookie of the Year, Robert Stout, who's leading the field right now in front of Luke Ochsner, who's doing a great job, by the way, fending off attacks from Michael Carter in the third position. But yeah, then you move to 2018. Celine Roland wins the scholarship shootout. He drove that sole red car last season. Then he wins Rookie of the Year. That was valued at $75,000. That is what got him into the 2019 season. And yes, you're absolutely right. He's won four races. He's won at every track on the circuit with the exception of Mid-Ohio. Now he's only got one race left later today to try to score a victory here. But yeah, no doubt, Roland came in as about as much of a championship favorite as you can be. Brian Lockwood putting a move on the number four of Ortiz, Ortiz right there for the fourth position. But yes, this is so unexpected, especially to see a mechanical issue from the 87 of six sideways. We're going to check in now on pit lane with Nick Yeoman, who has more. On yeah, Roland. Tony, just talked to the guys from six sideways. They reported it is a transmission issue. Blew up on Celine Roland. So what a tough break on lap number two for one of our championship contenders. Oh, I think we got a glimpse of him. Did, is he is he out of the car and up in one of the uh, the flag stands? I think. Yes, Selena has yeah. uh, joined our our wonderful corner workers. No racing takes place without corner workers. So a shout out to all of you guys manning the flag stands and the corners all around this racetrack and many others uh, every weekend. But Selena is stripping his overalls off, standing, joining the corner workers in the shade down there at turn two, the Andretti hairpin, and he'll be all alone down there. There's not a lot of people down there, and he'll have a chance to to gather his thoughts uh, and see how. Uh, what this means to him. He's, he's very, very talented. So uh, even without the scholarship, which looks like it has slipped through his fingers, uh, I think Celine has a bright, bright future in, in motorsports. He's a very talented young man. Uh, Michael Carter, Luke Oxner, both getting a little racy as they approach the corkscrew. It looks, Tony, like we're going to have a change for position. We have a new leader in the 77 of Luke Oxner. Boy, Luke Oxner rebounded so well after that really poor start off the green flag, and he shoots right by Robert Stout on the inside at the top of that very blind descent down through the corkscrew. So Luke Oxner in the number 77 for white racing, the team out of Northern Colorado now leads the way as they come out of 10. They swing back to the right side of the track to dive into the left-hander corner number 11. And Ochsner is your leader. And how about Drake Kemper running pretty well? You know, we talked about him not too long ago, Mark. He has not had the second half of 2019 that anyone would want, but he's certainly got things figured out here at Laguna Seca. He's fourth now. Michael Carter runs right up alongside Robert Stout as they crest the hill in one. Carter not really even going to make much of a battle out of it as he drives right around the 28 of Robert Stout. Carter now into P2 following the new race leader, Luke Oxner in the 77. And Michael Carter Mo came into the series with plenty of promise. He leads Gresham Wagner by 33 points in the quest to grab that $75,000 Rookie of the Year award. And uh, let's go all the way back uh, to 2018, the Mazda Road to 24 shootout winner. And a lot of folks noticed him right away. Very talented young man from uh, Savannah, Georgia. He goes to school in Atlanta. Um, he came to the shootout uh, uh, clearly as a favorite as we as we have that shootout. We do it every year. Celine Roland won it the year before. Uh, and Michael was head and shoulders above the other drivers in the shootout and has delivered. I mean, he, he won the shootout, and that's a bit of a, a risk. It's a bit of a gamble. Are you picking the right guy? And he has absolutely proven the judges who select the winner from that shootout right and correct because they picked the right guy. He's had a, he's had a really stellar year. He still has to get a win, uh, and maybe that'll come this weekend, but he's a very, very talented dr uh, driver. And, you know, he, he basically has to just get through this weekend without without a disaster, and he will secure that $75,000 
uh, prize that, that uh, goes to the Rookie of the Year. And in all likelihood, he will do as Celine did and, and take that fund and use it to, to fund an, another year, a sophomore year, in uh, Battery Tender MX-5 Cup in 2020. And down around turn number nine, we see a decent piece of debris lying uh, in, right in the racing groove. And uh, uh, it's actually coming uh, right at the entrance to the corkscrew. Great work by our camera guys being able to pick that up. And uh, the last time through there, I think they bumped it a couple of times. And it uh, looks like they're trying to get that out of the racing groove. Might be a surface flag in that area. That's it. But uh, folks, if you're wondering, if you're joining us for the first time and you're wondering do they race like this all the time, or is this something unusual? What you're seeing among the front four or five, uh, this is what we're used to seeing week in and week out, racing and racing. Yeah, absolutely, Mark. This is exactly what racing the battery tender Global MX-5 Cup looks like. And Michael Carter's getting a full rear view mirror right now of that 28 of Robert Stout. Stout got into him a little bit in the middle of turn number two. You know, not too much, not, no harm, no foul. But Carter is definitely feeling the rear bumper absorbing some impact. Uh, but it's all good. It's Robin's racing in, in the MX-5 Cup Series. And Drake Kemper now drops yeah. the right sides on the exit of the track. You know, there's not a lot of landscaping around here at uh, WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca, but John Dune and the folks at Mazda might be getting a bill for it before this one's all said and done. Well, and what's interesting to note is we had a four-car breakaway, but when they started dicing up for position two through five, that did two things. It allowed Oxter to pull away a little bit, but then suddenly that the four-car pack became, what, eight cars now? And, and as a result, those cars are all lined up, and they're tracking down the leader, Luke Oxter. Yeah, well, there's a great shot right there of Gresham Wagner in the red, white, and black number five. He just laid down the quickest lap of the race. That's what it's allowed him to reel right up on the back bumper of Brian Lockwood in the number 43. Lockwood racing for six sideways out of Sebring, Florida. And Lockwood had such a good weekend going almost every session in Portland, Oregon two weeks ago, but something seemed to always go wrong. A late race spin in the second round that weekend took him out of contention for a solid finish. But uh, Gresham Wagner, another one of our Rookie of the Year candidates, he competed last season, but once he reached the maximum eligibility, he, uh, he discontinued his 2018 season. As we see a great battle for the lead right there, Michael Carter puts it right to the inside in turn two and brings the fight to Luke Oxford. These two are side by side, Mark, racing for the lead. Uh, be advised, Robert Stout is hanging around there as well. We've seen him plenty racy throughout the course of the season. So uh, the, the youngster, Carter, goes to P1 with Oxner in tow. Stout and Kemper are there as well. That's Lockwood and R Wagner and Noaker now. Uh, it, doing what Robert Nowaker seems to do on most race weekends, Tony. Starts maybe 9th, 10th, 11th, or 12th, and then the next thing you know about uh, 10 minutes into the race, we suddenly see him start to poke his way into contention. Robert Nowaker's kind of like a silent assassin, not because he's just deadly on track, but also because he's pretty much silent. And there's a huge miscue right there for Michael Carter as he runs wide on the exit of that corner, running up the hill, and drops the right side BFGs off in the dirt. And he's going to fall all the way to what about seventh position yeah. behind Gresham Wagner, just in front of Robert Nowaker. That was a mistake that when you lead in the MX-5 Cup Series, you cannot afford to make, especially on that portion of the track, Mark. We just talked about it during previews. When you make that run up the hill from turn six all the way to the corkscrew, you can't afford in these MX-5 Cup cars to give up any momentum. And unfortunately, Michael Carter just gave it all the way right there. Tony, good run for Brian Lockwood. He started ninth, the rookie, and now he worked his way up to fourth now and uh, trying to get in contention for a podium finish. Yeah, like I said, in Portland just a few weeks ago, Lockwood looked phenomenal. He always seemed to have some kind of issue or, or make some kind of misstep uh, up in the Pacific Northwest as Michael Carter's already trying to pick his spots to get around Gresham Biker. But yeah, Lockwood looks very, he's a guy that it's the old adage, seat time is what you need to win and get better in these races. He drops a tire right there. I gotta quit talking about these guys because every time I seem to say something about them, they make a mistake. But yeah, Mark, you're right. Lockwood uh, has really come into his own in this second half of the season. And again, that's in no lack due to the thanks of all the ex expertise when it comes to working on these cars and driving them from John Dean and the team at Six Sideways. Currently running P2, Robert Stout, and he came into uh, this race today, Mo, within 25 points of the championship. Yeah, 
We had a press conference this morning where we had all six of our mathematically eligible championship contenders come together. Uh, Michael Carter, uh, Robert Noaker, and Drake Kemper are, are likely not contenders. But Robert Stapp was third in points. And he said this morning, he said, look, I have to go out and win these two races and hope that the two guys in front of me, Celine Roland and Brian Ortiz, don't have a good day. Well, Celine Roland is already out of this race. He's having a terrible day. Brian Ortiz has not found his groove. He's running around in ninth place. That's not enough for him to clin clinch the championship if the race were to finish right now. And if Robert Stout can get to the front and win this thing and Ortiz still struggles, this could make the championship battle in the second race between two complete, two different people with, with Robert Stout all of a sudden becoming a contender. Closing in on uh, 15 minutes which have gone by, which will uh, leave us about 25 minutes of racing remaining or deciding the championship of the Battery Tender Global MX-5 Cup here at WeatherTech Raceway. It always helps to be prepared with the best. Battery Tender Jump Starters provide high quality and attention to detail. These new Jump Starters are powered by lithium batteries. The Jump Starter also functions as a portable power bank for all mobile devices. With front-facing real-time battery power, you know what's left. Don't be left stranded. Start with trust. Start with Battery Tender. Welcome back, Weather Tech Raceway here at uh, Laguna Seca. And we're taking a look at uh, the 51 working its way around the course here, Mo. So driving the 51 car, the battery tender sponsored car in this battery tender sponsored series. You know, we often talk about Mike Prelick and how what an enthusiast he is. He's, of course, the owner of battery tender. They're in this series because it's a great platform them to, for them to promote their great battery care products. But Mike is also an enthusiast, and he bought one of these cars and said, I need to have a plaything too. And uh, he said, you know, let's let's build a car and wrap it in battery tender uh, logos and then use it for guest drivers. Well, the gentleman driving it now is Jaime Gabaldoni. He's the senior automotive editor for Univision. Uh, and he's in the process. This is the third episode, if you will, of a three-part episode they're making for Spanish language TV for Univision, where he wanted to go on the journey of becoming a race car driver. This is his first race weekend, although he has driven lots of cars and he's driven on racetracks a lot. This is his first race weekend. So we took him and this car to Sebring. He tested extensively at Sebring. He tested here about uh, three weeks ago. He spent a lot of time on simulators and uh, he's, he's really getting a baptism of fire. He's not going to challenge anyone for the podium but he is certainly uh, uh, putting on a good show for the battery tender folks and for our Spanish language uh, viewers. Well, and Jaime has spent a lot of the time in the battery tender hospitality area that Anderson Promotion sets up. And I've had the chance to talk to him. You know, I said, how did yesterday go for you? And after practice, you know, he said, it, it's pretty intense out there. And then after qualifying, when I spoke to him this morning, he said he had so much fun out on the track in qualifying. And he just raved about the competition here in the Global MX-5 Cup. And, and Jaime said that when he gets ready to go racing, he knows the intensity is to get picked up but I, I feel like he's ready for it he's showing well right now he took the green flag from pit lane after serving a penalty from qualifying but he's holding his own there's been no miscues from the 51 and he's showing that he's learning with every single lap of competition out on the track and you know the, the rest of the racing community the rest of the drivers have really embraced him and welcomed him into the fold here he got a standing ovation in the drivers meeting and they love having him here and what he represents in, in bringing this series and their series to a wider audience so it's really great to have have that level of attention and frankly, he's acquitting himself well. Robert Stout is absolutely wearing out the leader, Luke Oxter, and don't look now, but Drake Kemper uh, appears poised for a podium finish, Tony. He has worked his way up to the third position. Yeah, this is great racing all throughout the top five right now. Luke Oxner is just shooting the lights out of the gym. Robert Stout not letting him go, though, at all. But yeah, Drake Kemper looks phenomenal. You know, we talked about a round one victory back in Texas. He hasn't uh, had the second half of the season at all, but Nick, uh, things are looking up for the driver of the 99 here in California. Yeah. Yeah, there's no doubt at the midway point of the season, I think most of us looked at Drake Kemper and said, this is a guy that may very well win this championship.
championship. And as you mentioned, it's just been one thing after another in the second half of the season that's kind of derailed his championship hopes. Looking for a little bit of redemption. He had a really fast car in Portland and ended up having to pull off the racetrack with mechanical issues. So one of those guys that, listen, mathematically still has a chance. He's a super long shot, but nice to see him having a good run and sitting right there in that third position. And Michael Carter has rebounded from that bottle bobble we saw a couple of laps ago uh, approaching the corkscrew, which saw him lose about six positions on the track. He's already got that 08 all the way back up to fourth position. Yeah, and that's, you know, it's, it's, it's the name of the game. You know, as I heard Mo Murray say to me in the truck on the drive home from dinner last night, everyone makes mistakes. It's how you rebound and respond to those mistakes that really define who you are, whether it's as a race car driver or a business person. And so Michael Carter, yeah, he made a mistake a few laps ago, but he's kept his head down, and most importantly, he didn't let that ruin his entire race or definitely his weekend. So he runs in the fourth position right now. He can see the top three in front of him. There's still plenty of time to go in this race, Mark, and uh, I don't think you can count anybody in the top 10 out of a podium result right now. Uh, John Dean is in the 11th position overall, but leading the ND1 class. Nathaniel Sparks is 13th. He would be second in that class, followed by Sarah Montgomery, who's 14th overall, but currently running third. She's starting to make a habit of finishing on the podium. Absolutely, and Mo talked about it earlier in the first half of the race. Sarah Montgomery made history two weeks ago in the Pacific Northwest when she became the first female driver ever to stand on the podium and collect hardware in the battery tender global mx5 cup but she didn't just do it once she backed it up in race two on sunday morning so she's obviously still on a high from that weekend to see sparky running well right now chasing down his team owner and teammate john dean the second in that number 16 remember dean comes in here as the provisional nd1 champion all he's got to do is uh, put on the suit and tie and get up on stage and accept that one hundred thousand dollar scholarship prize tomorrow night at the monterey plaza during the championship bank where there's a great shot of him right now and then once he wins that ND1 championship, Mo, he will be elevated to competing in the mo more updated version of the MX-5 Cup, the ND2 category. The, that's correct. Um, the, the winner of the ND1 championship will not be eligible for ND1 next year. For the fans watching at home, what is an ND1, what is an ND2? So when the fourth generation Mazda MX-5 was launched uh, for the 2016 model year, um, it had 155 horsepower, and we built this race car. Long Road Racing builds these race cars based off of that car. For 2019, as we watch a replay of Gresham Wagner, it looks like, nope, uh, it's, uh, is that Palermo that's getting the, off in the, the dirt? That's the F57 car. That's the Gugliari. Uh, getting a little sideways going up the hill. That turn six is a very difficult corner. So uh, for the model year 2019, um, Mazda upgraded the engine in the street version of the MX-5. It now has 181 horsepower and revs to a higher red light, about 900 RPM more. And so these, these race cars for 2019 were built on that upgraded engine package. Um, and so that's what we call ND2. All the championship front runners we've been talking about are all driving the higher horsepower ND2 version. John Dean and some other drivers like Nathaniel Sparks, Sarah Montgomery, uh, Herner Palermo opted to stay in the older version, in the ND1 uh, version, and go for that championship, which this year carried a substantial prize by itself. Michael Carter living by the old adage, he who hesitates is lost. He's not wasted any time mixing it up with uh, Drew Kemper and, uh, and, and Gresham Wagner. A about a half a lap ago or so as we've reached the halfway point now, Lockwood, Nowaker, and Zach Lee, Tony, they're involved in a pretty good battle. That's the battle for seventh, eighth, and ninth. So great racing all over the racetrack. Yeah, somewhere in about the last two laps or so, Drake Kemper either had a miscue or something happened with the front two in front of him, and that a lot uh, kind of caused him to drop back to this fourth, fifth, and sixth battle. Now Drake Kemper finds himself dead on the target of uh, Michael Carter in that 0-8. So Carter's trying to reel in Kemper, but then he's got a whole train of cars behind him, as you talked about. Mark Gresham Wagner in the 5, Ryan Lockwood in the 43, and uh, Robert Noaker in the 13, the youngest driver in the field. And just as always, these all six, seven, eight of these cars are going to group back up, and we're going to have a giant pack racing for the lead. And when we get to it, the win. But there it is right there. Drake Kemper in that silver car holds the third final podium position right here in round number 11. But he's got Michael Carter, your current Rookie of the Year leader doing everything he can to get around him. Huge freight train coming out of 11 back up to complete a lap. Yeah, approaching a corkscrew, we're seeing Nathaniel Sparks trying to get around Peter Enzer. That is the battle for 12th, but most importantly, that would allow Sparky to catch up to John Dean, who runs in that ND1 class, as we mentioned, so dominant all year long. He's currently running in the 11th position, but P1 in the ND1 class. Both, uh, as we see, the 57th slide off course now. That's uh, cute. 
Cuglieri uh, in the ND1 class off of turn number six. Looks like he's enough off of the course to be out of harm's way. But, Mo, we talk about uh, the, the, the latter series, and, of course, all of those are on full display here in open wheel and certainly here at the Battery Tender Global MX-5 Cup. Uh, and we're getting ready to see a pretty good drag race for the lead uh, between the, the contenders, Luke Oxford and Robert Stout. Stout's going to grab the position, but it's certainly the way it's designed once upon a time. A ladder series was just that. You get to one level, win a championship, and move on. Uh, and while certainly that's the goal, that if you don't win a championship, the way this series is set up, it makes sense sometimes for a young driver to spend two, maybe three years uh, competing in battery tender global in X5. And, and that's true, and it's true of, of many series. You see young drivers who, who work their way up into the IndyCar series, for example. It's very, very unusual for a driver to find success in his first year because the cars at, at all levels have become very, very complex, and it, it's, it's an engineering uh, puzzle to try and figure out how to get the best out of these cars and all the other classes. So, so there's nothing, um, there's not, nothing bad, or people don't look down on a driver who comes in and spends a second year, win rookie of the year, and then spend a second year understanding these cars before you graduate out of a class. And that's that's been working. That formula works in, in Battery Tender MX-5 Cup, uh, just as it does in lots of other series. 77 of Luke Oxter. He's engaged in a pretty good battle with uh, Robert Stout, looking to to win the race. The first half of the doubleheader here today, Nick Yeoman. Yeah, no doubt. It's been fun watching Stout and Oxner do a little drafting, and ultimately Stout uh, take the lead one lap ago. You know, you guys were just talking about it moments ago about the formula for getting Robert Stout back in this championship hunt. Step one was, of course, win the race. He's doing a good job of it right now, taking the lead. But step two and step three were problems for Roland and Ortiz. Certainly, Roland already out of the race, but watching Brian Ortiz, guys, he's been buried in ninth. I've been watching the lap times over the last few laps. He's not making a lot of ground. There's about a pack of six cars that are ahead of him, and that red and white number four machine not really catching him. So this is falling right to the hands of Robert Stout with 15 and a half minutes to go. Uh, Kemper, Carter, Wagner, Nowaker, Lockwood. Uh, how am I doing, Tony? I mean, that's, that's, all of those guys in contention. Well, we say Kemper was in contention. He makes a wide swing on the approach up the hill, and uh, looks like he's going to gather it back in and minimize the damage. That uphill run is so deadly in these cars. You've got to be careful not to give away any momentum. And you, you want to carry as much as possible, Mark, as you know from watching racing your whole life. It's all about carrying momentum and using as much of the racetrack as you can. But here through six and seven and eight at Monterey, if you're not careful, you're going to drop those right side tires right off the track and into the dirt here at Laguna Seca. And that just kills any top end speed that you've been building all race long. Not too long ago, we were watching a really good battle for second place in ND1. It's currently Nathaniel Sparks and Sarah Montgomery. We've been talking all day about Montgomery podiuming at Portland. Well, she finished third in both those races. She's trying to do one spot better and finish second here in California. She's got her teammate Nathaniel Sparks right in front of her as we check back in on that battle. And actually, there we go. Montgomery has gotten around Sparks. So Sparky now back to third. Montgomery up to second. They're a country mile behind their team owner and teammate, John Dean, who leads the race in the championship. But yeah, things in ND1 not slowing down at all right here as there's a little bit of time left and we could see the podium continue to shake up. Yeah, front two continue to slug it out. Uh, Robert Stout and Luke Oxner and then Carter, Wagner, and Kemper. That's pretty good. No Waker is trying to keep pace. Lockwood, Lee, Ortiz, and Hall, the top ten. Coming up on uh, 13 minutes. Boy, I tell you, that, 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 that gives you an idea of just how very, very, very intense the action is and how they are flat slinging this thing around. How about Nathaniel Sparks gathering that back in? The guy's an absolute wheel man, Mark, and it shows that whether he's racing for a win in ND1, fighting for a championship in ND2, no matter what Nathaniel Sparks is driving, or even if he's just trying to run down his teammate, Sarah Montgomery, for a podium spot here in California when he's already out of contention for the championship, the guy does not slow down and he does not give an inch. That was a really cool move, and it shows you uh, what you have to do to be able to keep these cars under control no matter where we go 
well. These MX-5 Cup cars are not easy to drive by any shape or form. But boy, right here, this battle for the lead, not slowing down at all. Robert Stout brings him out of 11, now back up the front straightaway. Luke Oxter in the number 77, running right where he qualified, P2. Robert Stout having a very good round 11, the penultimate race in the 2019 championship. We check in to see about just over 12 minutes to go in this race. Stout brings out about a two, three car length advantage, and Michael Carter has worked his way up to third after Drake Kemper threw it away up the hill about two laps ago. Now the laps and the time continue to click away. We're approaching 12 minutes to go in race number one of two today. Robert Stout, Oxter, Carter, Wagner, and Kemper, the top five here at WeatherTech Raceway. Inspiration in every mile. The Mazda CX-5 with Turbo. Feel alive. Welcome back, Weather Tech Raceway. Battery tender, tender Global MX-5 Cup. And so far, it's Robert Stout, Luke Oxter. They've been the class of the field. Michael Carter had a bobble when he was among the front runners. That youngster has gathered it back in and gotten himself back into contention. Gresham Wagner and Greg Kemper in the top five, and uh, Mo, one of the, I, I guess, a part of the history, the tapestry of this outstanding facility was a memorable win by Max Pappas. Uh, Max started well in the, deep in the field, and uh, at 26th, I believe it was, uh, but used a four-stop strategy to get himself to victory lane. And I bring Max Pappas up because I'd like for you to enlighten the folks about the important contributions that uh, Max Pappas makes to uh, all, not only all forms of racing, but certainly to the battery tender of Global MX-5 Cup. Well, you know, Max is, is a legend as a race fan. You know, uh, we've I, I've watched Max race everything from Formula One to IndyCar to sports cars to NASCARs. Uh, he's an awesome guy, and he spends quite a bit of time around the paddock, around the IndyCar paddock, and particularly around the Battery Tender MX-5 Cup paddock. We have used Max uh, as a sort of a, uh, a tutor or a, or a guiding light for these young drivers when they when they get a little too crazy and they get a little too excited. Uh, we've brought Max in to talk to them and and explain to them uh, how the long game works and how, how uh, you know, you want to be an old racing driver. Um, and so he, he's a very wise guy. He's, he's, he's had great experience. But also he has a, he has a very uh, capable company, uh, Max Pappas Innovations, and they make uh, part, performance parts for lots of cars. For these cars, they provide us the steering wheels. Um, and they're looking at uh, several other different components to, to help us with these cars and lots of other Mazda race cars. So love working with Max. It's always a treat when you get to work with people you've idolized. Uh, and you know, throughout the course of the season, we've talked about Max. Uh, we've talked about obviously the folks uh, involved with preparing these chassis and all the pieces and parts that they're responsible for in terms of converting these cars to race ready. We're talking about your, we talked about your title sponsor, the uh, battery tender Global MX-5 Cup. We've talked about uh, be of good, the, the be of good rich. The list goes on and on and on. Uh, it, it's certainly a number of entities come together to provide this outstanding opportunity for these drivers. And, and they're led by, of course, the folks at Long Road Racing who Mazda charged with, with uh, designing and building these cars. They take production MX-5s. They come right off the boat from Hiroshima. They land in Jacksonville and are shipped to Long Road Racing in Statesville, North Carolina, where they remove about 250 parts uh, and they install about 250 replacement or racing parts. They also strip the bodies down to just the bare metal. They take all the sound deadening uh, material out. They take a bunch of the the, the uh, seam sealer out of the car to take weight out of it. And then they add in all these, uh, some performance parts, but mostly uh, safety parts. There's an FIA uh, certified roll cage. There's a fire suppression system. They add shocks. The, the transmission is different. The diff is different. Uh, the cooling system is different. They seal the engines, interestingly. The engines are exactly stock. Uh, these ND2 cars, as I mentioned, have 181 horsepower. Um, and they're sealed. Uh, there's uh, several different seals on the engine. And because we have 
one builder and, and we, they have a great uh, quality control system, we've been able to have fantastic parity in the series. These cars are all absolutely identical. The car that quali qualifies fastest is absolutely the same as the car that qualifies at the back of the field. Um, and therefore, the difference is the driver. And so for, for young drivers looking for a place to race, looking for a place, place to showcase their talent, this series is fantastic. Not only are the cars, does the parity in the cars give the driver a chance where he, he or she with their driving talent can make a difference, but also if you do make a difference, the prize fund that is available, the scholarship system that's available, if you're a young race car driver looking for somewhere to begin your professional career, there, there are very few options that are as appealing or as uh, uh, successful as, as uh, Battery Tender MX-5 Cup has been. Well, certainly, you know, once upon a time, title sponsorship for this facility, as a matter of fact, but I, I don't think we can underscore the impact that Mazda has on, on, on motorsports and this facility in itself, very near and dear to the hearts Absolutely. of folks Absolutely. This, this was our spiritual home, still is for many of us. For 17 years, this place was known as Mazda Raceway uh, Laguna Seca. Uh, now it's WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca. Our friends at WeatherTech, great partners in the in the IMSA series and, and uh, great friends of, of uh, motorsports, uh, took over that role as the, as the title sponsor, the naming rights uh, holder for this facility. Um, great, th this is a great place for us. And for us to finish our championship season here, not only for these cars, but also for the uh, open wheel cars where we also have three Road to Indy series with Mazda scholarship drivers, two of whom are looking to clinch their own championships um, in Hunter, Mc Hunter McElroy and uh, Kyle Perford. Uh, and of course, that Indy Light series goes down to a former scholarship winner in Oliver Askew and uh, the current scholarship winner in Renus BK. So again, uh, we're seeing uh, drivers uh, make some wide exits, uh, Tony. Nathaniel Sparks yet again not taking the short way around this race course. Well, you know, we've seen several shots of Sparky have trouble with the back end of that number eight from Six Sideways Racing. And the first time that we showed a replay a few laps ago, thought maybe it was just him pushing the limit a little hard. But he's had several in the time since then. So uh, I begin to think that maybe there's more to do with the handling of that car not being the way that Sparky prefers it to be. Uh, so perhaps some major adjustments coming to the rear end of that eight car, maybe perhaps even something wrong with the underside of that car as we wrap up race number one of the weekend. That may well be the case, Tony, but the other thing to note is both of those incidents we saw came at turn six, and we talked uh, yesterday in practice about the importance on this racetrack of turn six. It's a fast corner that leads to a long uphill uh, stretch, so if you don't get off of that corner with every piece of speed that you can muster, you're going to be compromised by the time you get to the top of the hill and enter into the corkscrew. So it could be a problem at the back end of the car, or it could be Nathaniel is really, really pushing hard at a corner on this racetrack when to do it right and to get it just perfect will pay off huge dividends at the top of the hill. And my apologies for the tardiness of passing this information along, shared by race control. We pointed out a couple of laps ago, the area in the 57 car got off course and uh, he was setting well off the race course uh, in the runoff area uh, at turn number six and they have decided to throw a local caution flag out and that car will sit there for the remainder of the race and uh, as we look at uh, Tony Laporta again we need to remind folks as we look up at timing and scoring we see him at 24th um, it jumps off the screen in a hurry who's sitting in that 25th position. Today. Yeah, your championship runner-up coming into the weekend, Celine Roland, the driver out of Orlando, Florida, in the number 87 four race victory so far to the 10 races contested coming into this weekend in California. Lap one issues coming out of the final corner take Roland completely out of this race, round 11 of a 12 race season. And we got reported from Nick Yeoman that it's a transmission issue on the number 87 car as Luke Ochsner starts to defend hard against Michael Carter coming down into the Andretti hairpin. Robert Stout is nearly completely checked out here. And I think Ochsner's doing what he can to keep those BFGs underneath him. But Michael Carter wants to go for the second position. Now they head to three. Carter's on the inside. Ochsner's got to let him through. Now it's Carter to second place. Ochsner's going to drop tires on the exit of three. They set up for four. Now Ochsner's got to continue to defend. He's going to lose another spot to Gresham Wagner. So it's a three position swing as Ochsner loses two spots. Now Drake Kemper is going to go after Ochsner as they get ready to head up to five. Can Ochsner stop the bleeding? He's going to keep his foot on the throttle and the wheel to the left as they make the run up five. Now they'll head for the hill into six. But boy, Ochsner not having a lap that he wants at all. And Robert Stout saying, mix it up, boys. Mix it up, boys. I'm, I'm happy with this one second lead. And, uh, 
to give you an idea if you're not familiar with this series first of all shame on you you need to to, to, to get familiar with the series especially later today when we run race number two and then uh, uh, certainly next season a one second lead is the eternity of the series oh sure. my gosh Drake Kemper was just elbows up through the corkscrew if you see any other car get that sideways this weekend I suggest you photograph it I hope very much we get to see a replay of that because Kemper was looking at the grandstands coming through the corkscrew as he is still somehow managed to stay right on Luke Oxner's back bumper guys I've never seen a car get that sideways through the corkscrew <laughs> I think uh, I think Drake Kemper's gonna need to change his shorts when this I one's mean, over I mean look what look what happens to Luke Oxner though I mean just moments ago he was in contention for the race win and here's the replay that Tony was describing to you nice and slow-mo man I love our camera Gosh. operators around this track Kemper is completely locked up he goes through the curbs in a four-wheel drift Mark have you ever seen anything like that uh, not in this series but certainly as you mentioned a four-wheel drift look like formula drifting maybe he's mixing disciplines here at, uh, perhaps the tech race play, perhaps yeah. his team owner drifted a Dodge Challenger <laughs> through the corkscrew a couple of years ago although I don't think that's the line he's going through and boy Oxter continues to slip and slide through the infield section here at WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca the tires are just gone underneath that uh, number 77 from white racing and uh, boy it's definitely changed the complexion of this race late in the going less than two minutes to go but we made a couple of references to race control the important significance the benefits for the battery tender global MX5 Cup to have essentially the NTT IndyCar Series race stewards handling race control for these young drivers the benefit for your series today uh, absolutely we we the, the race director for our race here is the same same Kyle Novak who's the race director for the IndyCar series he comes to our drivers meetings he, he uh, counsels our drivers and he oversees these races and that's one of the great benefits of our, our alignment with IndyCar they're the sanctioned body for this um, to have the AMR safety team that come as part of the IndyCar package take care of our drivers uh, on the track to have the IndyCar uh, race direction staff uh, run these races for us and they do so in, in a fantastic uh, um, very fair way uh, we've had no issues at all uh, this season and we look forward to uh, to being part of the IndyCar family for the for next year also well Tony guess what white flag is in the air and the advantage for one Mr. Robert Stout is a very uncharacteristic 1.4 seconds and uh, second and third I think Carter Wagner pretty firm grasp on that however Oxner Kemper, that one is far from being decided. If you were watching this last lap right here and the Duke cars you see on your screen, Mark, you'd think this is the battle for the lead, maybe the battle for the win, maybe the battle for the championship. It's not even a fight for a podium position because as they run right now, Drake Kemper is in the fourth position out ahead of Luke Oxner. That's for P4 and P5 on the track, Mo. So Robert Stout is doing exactly what he said he would do, but but one guy to watch here, he, he rolled around in ninth place for most of this race, but in the last couple of laps has climbed two spots is Brian Ortiz. Brian Ortiz, uh, seventh place, if he should finish this lap in that position, will mean that this, he won't clinch the championship, but he will make it very, very difficult for anyone to take it away from him in the second race coming up later this afternoon. But certainly Robert Stout has put himself into a, a, a position to be a real contender. Uh, John Dean currently is the leader running in the 11th position in Indy 1. Sarah Montgomery up to second. Nathaniel Sparks is third. The leader is working his way through the corkscrew. And Tony Laporta, we're going to give you an opportunity to bring Robert Stout to the checkered flag. They make their way out of the right-hander turn number 10. They'll snake through the left-hander in 11. Robert Stout's got no one in front of him, and he doesn't care about who's behind him. He comes over the rumble strips and up the hill. Stout is going to win in California as he takes round 11 of the 2019 Global MX-5 Cup. Boy, this one was topsy-turvy for sure. Michael Carter matches his season best result from a few weeks ago in Portland with another runner-up finish here in the ND2 category. And Gresham Wagner coming out of nowhere to finish P3 here in ND2. And then we keep our eyes on that race in the ND1 Championship. There he is flashing the headlights coming underneath the starter's bridge here at Laguna Seca. There's your winner, John Dean adding yet another victory to what will be a championship winning season in the ND1 category. And how about it, Mo? in second place, three podiums in a row for the young lady from Louisiana, Sarah Montgomery gets it done in second place. Her teammate Sparky holds on for third.
That is a great accomplishment for Sarah. Not only did she back up her two podiums uh, from Portland, but she went one step higher and gets up to second place on, the, on an MX-5 Cup podium. What a great end of this season she's having. It's a bit of a surprise, uh, I, I think. We have seen Robert Nowaker in contention week in and week out. And I mean, you know, for a lot of drivers, sixth place is a quality finish, but uh, Robert Nowaker, uh, is, that's where he will finish today. Didn't see him. He wasn't able to get back up with that lead draft and stay with them. But uh, got to give a lot of credit to Robert Stout of that ND2. He drove a great race. And uh, 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 Mo, uh, 141 total passes, just a couple of lead changes. But certainly from that lead draft on back, plenty of action as there always is in the Global MX5 Cup Series. And, uh, and one run by Robert Stout got exactly what he needed when he needed it in terms of staying in championship contention. Got a little help from Salim. Roland uh, with the mechanical issues that he had relegated him to 25th place today. So, uh, you know, the, the cars haven't even stopped running yet, so this is unofficial at best. But here's what the points look like after this round 11 of this series. We have one race left, which will go green at 6 p.m. this afternoon. Currently, uh, as the points stand, Brian Ortiz has done enough. He finished in seventh place. He now has 235 points. Just seven points back is Robert Stout who has put himself absolutely in contention for that championship. Uh, he's at 228 points. Um, 210 points, no, that's Sarah Montgomery. 216 uh, um, points is Celine Roland. Um, still possibly a contender, uh, mathematical at least. And then uh, Michael Carter at 209. So certainly Robert Stout and, uh, and Brian Ortiz have set themselves up for an afternoon duel here for 40 minutes beginning at 6 o'clock this afternoon at WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca. What's interesting, we've seen championship contenders have some issues in races earlier this season in which they had, you know, a runoff, they had a, an off or something, they spun or whatever, and they fell to the rear of the field. They were able to continue on, work their way back up through the pack, and of course, every pass for position is worth a point. No such luck for Celine Roland. He yeah. never had an opportunity to get that car back on the racetrack. And, and his he, he may have used up that look in Portland when he did just as you've That's described. Right. <laughs> and unfortunately today that car was not going anywhere and he spent the rest of the race sitting with the corner workers down there in turn two, the Andretti hairpin. Beautiful place to sit and watch a race, no question, but I'm certainly he would much rather have been looking at the and, race from behind his windshield. And by the way, race number two will feature Celine Roland and Luke Oxner on the front row and Robert Stout will roll off row number two. He'll worry about that later, Nick Yeoman, because he's going to celebrate the win right now. Step number one is in the book, Robert Stout. You talk about this championship needed to get a race win and have other guys have problems. How good is this? I can't believe that that just unfolded the way it did. I knew we had a fast car. The McCombie McAleer racing Mazda is always a top three car. So to be able to get out into the lead, maintain the lead is great. And if I can deliver a championship to Lucas Oil, who supported me for so long, it would be a, a really big deal to me and my family. And I can only hope that we can finish this weekend off strong. But regardless, we're always happy with the win, no matter how the championship turns out. How does uh, just seven points back heading into the second race sound? Yeah. I. I don't even know yet. I don't even know. I'm, I'm trying to calculate numbers in my head of what I have to do already later this afternoon. So uh, all we can do is put our head down and dig. Ortiz is somebody I've competing, been competing with for a long time since we both entered the series together. And actually, our rookie of the year came down to a seven-point spread two years ago here uh, where he was one spot ahead of me before having a failure. So uh, we know how to race together hard but clean. So it should be a good show. Congratulations. That's Robert Stout, your winner in ND2. Uh, not going to be long, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, but we're going to go IndyCar qualifying on all the usual outlets. And so uh, don't forget, one more race a little bit later on this afternoon, 555 Pacific, 855 Eastern. We will decide the championship in the Global MX-5 Cup here at Laguna Seca. Thanks to Mo Murray, Tony Laporta, great stuff in the booth as always. Also, thanks to Nick Young for all of his work on pit road. So long for now from WeatherTech Raceway at Laguna Seca.